Hey guys, Matt here today, getting ready to go into prison, and I just got a, a quick nugget for you. Um, you're probably wondering how many videos can a guy make on Colossians 1, 1 through 14. Well, one more uh, today. I just want to just want to leave you with a thought on this first little section. You know, we always break down scripture in sections and kind of bite-sized chunks and kind of figure out what's going on. And, and, and I, I noticed something in this little passage, Colossians 1, 1 through 14. And it's something that's crucial, something that's very important in our prayer life. We've been talking about prayer. We've been talking about apocalypto, the, the unveiling, open our eyes, Lord, you know. The epinosis, give us the God kind of knowledge, not the, the man kind of knowledge. Give us godly wisdom, not worldly wisdom. Give us more, Lord. And we've been looking at some different prayers, you know, in Ephesians 3 and Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1 here. But I want you to see something here because I know that people watching this, some people, are going through desert experiences. I know that people are waiting for something, waiting for God to move in circumstances. They might be health, they might be financial, they might be relational. They might be relational between you and God. God always makes us wait. He always brings us through the desert. Is it because he's mean? No, because he wants to make us more like Jesus. Suffering is good. Being broken is good because he puts us back together more like Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. And when, when God was bringing me through the desert, it was tough. That What I'm going to talk about today was tough, but I learned it, and it is a glorious thing and it is praising God in the desert and thanking God in prayer and in fact the commentator who writes our commentator our books in the prison pastor Tom Kelby he in his commentary this week he put in the, in his notes he said God moves in a thankful atmosphere and that is just, it just sums it up. And, and I, that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about what Paul, how Paul prays. Because remember, we know what's going on. There's false teaching, like there always is, right? There's a new church, Satan's there, false teaching. You've got, you've got the Gnostics coming at you from one, one side, coming at the Colossians from one side, and the Judaizers from another. You've got, just like today, you've got legalism and you've got liberalism. You've got false teaching all over, coming from within, coming from without. But notice what Paul does. Paul doesn't write a letter and say, You foolish Colossians, what's the matter with you? Gird yourself up. What? Come on, guys. Well, I can't believe you're, you're falling for this false teaching. No, no, no. He comes out and he, he tells them who he is. He's an apostle. He, he prays a blessing over them. He tells them that he encourages them by telling them they're saints and faithful followers. But then look what he does in verse 3. And here's what I want to talk about today. Paul says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Paul starts his prayer out in thanksgiving. So here's Paul, right? The church is going sideways. Satan's trying to tear it up. And he doesn't panic. He doesn't, well, he can't come because he's in prison in Rome. But what does he do? He starts his prayer by thanking God. And that is what God wants from you and I as we go through our desert, as we wait for God to move in certain arenas in our life. Now, certainly, if, if, if a loved one is in a car accident or something horrible like that, we, we don't stop and say, Lord, I always thank you. No, 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 no. This is more for the situational prayers. This is more for you've got a loved one who, who isn't born again. You've got somebody in your life who's struggling from addiction or certain sins or or you're waiting for God to move on your behalf in finances or something like this. We're all waiting for God for something. By the way, you're in good company. There's a lot of people who had to wait for God to move. But Paul starts his prayer off. Paul starts his, before he even petitions God, he starts by thanking God. And God loves that. God loves that. So, so Paul starts out thanking God. And then in verse 5, he lays down the truth. He says, guys, you, you've heard this before in the word of truth, comma, the gospel. So he, he refutes these false teachers without even mentioning them. He's going to do it more in chapter 2. But he, he, he prays thanksgiving to God and he mentions this word of truth, comma, the gospel. 
The word of truth is the gospel. The gospel is the word of truth. There's only one gospel. Why am I saying this? Because this is how Paul ends his little section here too. If you look in verse 12, Paul says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, comma, the forgiveness of sins. Just like he says in Ephesians, right? So how does Paul start out? He starts out with thank thankfulness and the gospel. Right? The word of truth, the gospel. How does he end up? Thankfulness and the gospel. And that's a beautiful thing. So when we pray to God, we should always thank him. We should always thank him for what he is doing in our life, what he's done in our life, what he is yet to do in our life. And we should thank him for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we have salvation. We are saved. Right? If you're born again. No matter what you're waiting for, no matter how dark things seem, and it's seem, because we don't live by sight, we live by faith, right? No matter how dark things seem, we always know that we got the helmet of salvation on and we are saved. Okay? So it's easy to start our prayer with thanksgiving and thanking God for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to leave you with one more thought along this line of how we pray to God. We start off with thanksgiving. I always bring up Psalm 34. I bring it up repeatedly because it's one of the greatest psalms in all the Bible. Uh, David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Okay, so this is how we approach God. Before we petition Him, which is okay to do, we thank Him and we praise Him for who we are in Christ and what we have. Because we have every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Just a little food for thought. Uh, praise God, have a good night, and uh, pray for me as I go in the prison. Peace.